All right, hey buddies. Uh, tonight this is module three, lesson nine. This is grade five, and these, I'm just gonna go through the challenging problems, the homework challenging problems. So parents, teachers, students, these are just some of the problems that Ms. Dorn feels like you may have some trouble with, okay? So let's look at number D, or letter D on the homework problem. Here we have, and let me make sure I have my ink going. Here we have two fifths plus one fourth, and then plus one tenth. So up to this date, we have only been adding two fractions with unlike denominators. Here we have one, two, three fractions with unlike denominators. So unlike before where we would just multiply the denominators together, we could do that here, but we would have a number too large to use. So here, here we have to use a different method. We have to take a look or analyze our denominators. Here I have 5 as the denominator, 4 as the denominator here, and 10 as the denominator here. Okay, we have to figure out a number that we can divide all three of these numbers into. Okay, and we won't have a remainder. Okay, so I usually start with the biggest number, 10, and see if I can divide the other numbers into 10 because I know I can divide 10 into 10. 10 divided by 10 equals 1, right? And then let's see if I can use the 5. Can 5 divide into 10? evenly without a remainder yes five divides into ten two times or you can say ten divided by five equals two but let's see can four divide into ten without a remainder no because four divides into ten two times with a remainder of two so i can't use that okay so now let's see if i can double this big number and go to 20 right and then go back and check can i divide 10 into 20 and have no remainder so 10 divides into 20 two times with no remainder good can i divide 4 into 20 with no remainder 4 divided into 20 five times with no remainder good and can i divide 5 into 20 with no remainder 5 divides into 20 four times very good with no remainder so now we have a common denominator right now we have our common denominator and here our common denominator is 20. so now we go through our formula you all you know we divide here and then we cross multiply here i'm going to divide here and then cross multiply here and then we get up here i go divide here and then i'll cross multiply here just like we've done in class with all the rest of them except for this particular problem has three fractions so let's get ready to divide okay 10 divided into 20 okay five times i mean um, two times i'm sorry two times two times one equals two so two is our new uh equivalent numerator here four divides into 20 five times five times one equals five very good five divides into 20 four times four times two equals four so now we have equivalent fractions for all of the fractions we started with and they all have like denominators so now we can add because when they all have like denominators you can now add your fraction so let me rewrite it because most of my students are used to seeing it written in the horizontal way so i have four twentieths plus five twentieths plus two twentieths all right now we did all the hard work to get the like denominator so the denominators are the same guess what buddies they stay the same good so we have 24 our denominator and all we do is add our numerators 4 plus 5 equals 9 and 9 plus 2 equals 11 so our answer here is 11 20ths that is the answer for d so if you got that answer good job if you're checking your homework great job sweetie pies my, this is my version of an emoji. <laughs> okay, so you know you got that one correct. And any problems that we have like that that have more than two uh, fractions to add or subtract, you do it the same exact way. Okay, I want to try to go to the word problem. So for those of us who are working with Ms. Dorm at the moment, okay, I want you all to go to your word problem while I try to erase the screen here. And start reading your word problem. And Ms. Broom's going to read it out loud in just a moment after I finish erasing. Now, for those of us who are just checking your homework, very good. I hope you did a great job on homework tonight. And Ms. Drum's going to read 
the word problems for tonight. So I just want to do the problems that I thought you may have some, prob some trouble with. It says on Monday, K, practice guitar for two-thirds of one hour. So two-thirds of. Now let's talk about this word, this word of when it comes to fractions in math. Of means multiply. Anytime you see that of when it comes to fractions, it means multiply. So it says two-thirds of one hour. Okay, then it says when she finished, she practiced piano for three fourths of an hour. So here we have three fourths of, there's that word again, of means multiply of one hour. Then the last part says, how much time did Kay spend practicing instruments on Monday? How much time? So we're talking about time. Time is measured in hours. Time is measured in minutes. Time is measured in seconds, right? So here we need to find out two-thirds times one hour. How many minutes are in one hour? I hope you said 60, right? One hour equals 60 minutes. So now I'm going to rewrite okay now I'm going to rewrite because now I know I have a number here that I can actually multiply so this now transforms into two-thirds times 60 right and I can't don't get excited yet because I know my students are prompt to get excited when we were multiplying fractions because those are the easiest right easy peasy lemon squeezy but I can't multiply by this whole number in order to make this fraction into a whole number we have to put it over one. Now we have fractions that we can multiply, right? Now, we'll talk about why putting this fraction over one still makes it a whole number. So 60, this really means 60 divided by one. And what is 60 divided by one? 60. So you're back to your whole number. So any whole number you want to make into a fraction, you put it over one. So why is multiplying fractions the easiest for students? Because all you do is multiply. You multiply the numerator by the numerator. And then you multiply the denominator by the denominator. That's so easy. You don't have to worry about equivalent fractions. You don't have to worry about how to transform, divide, and then cross multiply. You just multiply straight across. So here we have 60 times 2, which is 120. And then we multiply our denominators. 3 times 1 here and here equals 3. Now there's something going on with this fraction. Okay, because the numerator is larger than the denominator. Something's wrong with that. This is called a what? Improper fraction. No. We have to change all improper fractions into, uh, I'm not eerie. We have to change all improper fractions into mixed numbers. How do we do that? First, we read this fraction as if it was a division problem. In order to do that, I say the top number, 120. This line means divide. Okay by 3. So we do 120 divided by 3. Let me do it off to the side. 120 divided by 3. How many times is 3 divided into 1? 0. Now we go to the first two numbers. How many times is 3 divided into 12? Okay, I hope you said 4. 4 times 3 equals 12. 12 minus 12 equals 0 and we bring down our 0. How many times is 3 divided into 0? 0. 3 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 0 equals 0. So our answer here is 40. So 120 over 3 equals 40. Very good. So now that was 40 minutes that she practiced. Okay, two-thirds of an hour. Now we have to figure out three-fourths of an hour, right? So we're going to do the same thing all over again. Same thing here. We have to transform one hour into minutes. One hour equals 60 minutes, right? So now I have a new equation. I have 3 fourths times 60. Now, in order to multiply this, I have to make it into a fraction. And in order to make a whole number into a fraction, all you do is put it over 1. And then the most exciting thing about multiplying fractions, they're so easy. What are those? Oh my, <laughs> no, Ms. Burns being silly. Very good. All you do is multiply straight across, okay? So class, you multiply the numerator times the numerator. Here is easy multiplication because this is base 10, right? So we know we multiply the number times the number. 3 times 6 equals what? 18. And then how many zeros you add to the end? 1 zero because there's only 1 zero in your base 10 number, right? And now we multiply the denominators. 4 times 1 equals 4. 
And we have another fraction, 180 over 4, which is improper because the numerator is larger than the denominator. So we have to transform that, right? So now we have, read it as a division problem, 180 divided by 4. Okay, so let me do it off to the side here. And I hope you're doing it along with me on your paper. So 180 divided by 4. Okay, so let's get started, class. We know that we divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, right? 4 divided into 1, 0 times. So now we go to the first two numbers. 4 divided into 18. How many groups of 4 can I get out of 18? Let me see. Let me count. 4. Okay, and then if I add another group of 4, that's 8. If I add another group of 4, that's 12. If I add another group of 4, that's 16. But if I add another group of 4, I'll go over 18, so I have to stay here. I have to stay at 1, 2, 3, 4 groups of 4. So I'll put my 4 there. 4 times 4 equals 16. And then we subtract. Okay? 8 minus 6 is 2. And 1 minus 1 is 0. Very good. And now let's bring down our 0. Now we start all over because we divide it. We multiply, we subtract and bring down, and then you er, go back to the beginning, right? 4 divides into 20 four times. Now we multiply 4 times 4 equals, uh-oh, I'm sorry, 4 divides into 25 times. Let me start correct it right quick. 4 divides into 25 times. Very good. Now we multiply 5 times 4 equals 20. And then we subtract 20 minus 20 equals Zero. Very good. And I don't have anything left to bring down. So now we know that she practiced three-fourths of an hour equals 45 minutes. Very good. So she practiced 45 minutes the second time. And then the first time she practiced 40 minutes. So how much did she practice in all on Monday? So now I have to add 40 minutes plus 45 minutes. And I know it's crowded on my page here. I wish they let me add another page. I don't know. 0 plus 5 equals 5. 4 plus 4 equals 8. In total, she practiced 85 minutes. Okay? We can transform this back into hours if we wanted to, but they didn't ask us to. So it's okay to leave it here. When you're taking your test, if they don't have the, the answer the way you got it, then transform it back into minutes. So how do I do that? Can I erase some, you all? So I can show you. Okay, let me erase. I'm not going to erase all of it, but I'll erase enough just to give Ms. Dorm some room so I can give you the example here, right? Okay, how do I transform 85 minutes back into hours? How many minutes are in an hour? I hope you said 60, right? Very good. So we're going to divide 85 by 60 and see what's left over. And this should give you your mixed number, right? All right. So how many times is 80 divided into 60? Let's do it over here. 85 divided into 60 or 85 divided by 60. How many times is 60 divided into 8? Zero, right? Now we go to the second, the first two numbers. 60 divided into 85 one time. Because I know 2 times 60 would give me 120 and I can't go over. 1 times 60 equals 60. Now 5 minus 0 equals 5. 8 minus 6 equals 25. Now when you're making your improper fraction, you know this is step 1. That gives you your whole number. Step 2 gives you your numerator. And step 3 gives you your denominator. So we follow our steps like this. From here, 1. Then 2 then three and i'll write it just in case parents and uh teachers and other students right step one gives you your whole number step two tells you what the numerator will be and then step three tells you your denominator so let me write my mixed fraction here all right step one tells me my whole number so our whole number is 1 here. Step 2 gives me the numerator. So my numerator is 25. And then step 3 gives me my denominator. So my denominator is 60. She practiced 1 hour and 25 over 60 
um, minutes or you can say 25 out of 60. So she practiced for one hour and 25 out of 60 minutes or one hour and 25.